There's been a lot of debate on whether there is a place for prayer in government buildings in Canada. Premier Wabkanu says it's time to change the prayer that is said at the start of each session at the Manitoba Legislature. He says it should be more reflective of the diverse peoples that make up the province. Some argue, though, that the use of prayer is a long-standing tradition and should be kept as is. Ian Bushfield is Executive Director for BC Humanist Association. Uh, joining us on the line now, hi Ian. Good morning, or good afternoon. Good to talk to you. What is a humanist? What, what does your organization do? We're the group for people who believe in reason, compassion, and hope, and want to promote secular and progressive values. So we're based out here in British Columbia, but we've worked on issues of church-state separation across Canada from coast to coast. And in the research that, that your organization has done, um, how many municipalities, uh, particularly in Manitoba, still open their meetings with prayers? It's not that many. In 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that starting a meeting with prayers was unconstitutional. And so after that ruling, most stopped. But what we found is that there was always a couple remnants who wanted to retain the tradition either defiantly or perhaps naively. that Maybe they weren't aware of the decision. And so I think there was only seven in Manitoba when we looked a couple years ago. Most notably, the city of Winnipeg uh, starts with each councillor Uh, Each day, a different counselor giving a personal prayer from their own perspective or tradition. That that ruling you were talking about in 2015 uh, was about a municipal council in Quebec. Um, It it ruled that the prayer violated the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and was, quote, an infringement on freedom of conscience and religion, unquote. Uh, But what if the prayer is inclusive, as as Wab Canu wants? Um, Does that make a difference? Does that change anything? I think it really depends on the context and the specifics. So what happened in Quebec is they had a very Catholic prayer that they started with, and they tried to change to something that they deemed non-denominational. And in that view, it was still unconstitutional because it still excluded atheists. Now, when I read Premier Canoe's statements that he's talking about working with people who support secularism, uh, he wants it to be inclusive of people who define themselves as atheists or non-believers. I'm optimistic that what he is trying to find is some kind of moment of reflection, perhaps, or a moment of silence that can let everyone believe or take that moment for what they do believe. And, you know, that's the kind of approach that we're supportive of. Uh, It's something we've seen Quebec move to in its provincial legislature, as well as Nova Scotia. And Newfoundland never actually started with a prayer. If the province um, were to speak with you, and particularly... um Premier Wab Canoe, what, what would you say about um, the, the BC Humanist Association's position or, or stance on this issue? We'd say that we're you know, delighted to have this conversation and that secularism is something that is here to protect and welcome everyone. It's about inclusion. It's making sure that everyone feels welcome and a part of our institutions, most importantly, the government. Talk more about that. When, when you think about um, those principles, um, what, what would be a suitable replacement f- uh, for, um, for prayer, for example? Well, like we've seen in a couple places, they have moved to moments of silence. Uh, one thing we were actually really impressed with Manitoba is it's the first province in the country that moved to opening with a land acknowledgement. And in you know the era of reconciliation, that's a rather symbolic and small measure, but it is one that we saw many Indigenous groups applaud and welcome. And so they've already done that step, and it's something we've encouraged British Columbia and other legislatures to take on. But here in British Columbia, for example, we open with moments of uh, prayer or reflection, where a different MLA each day reads out something from their tradition. And we prefer it just be a moment of reflection that the MLA can read something that's meaningful to them if they want to use that to mark the symbolic importance of the day uh, and get them reflecting. But it doesn't necessarily have to be religious. Right, and because that, that is something that's come up as we have this discussion is what, what way would an, would an atheist, um, for example, open a session? Yeah, and there's lots of things. Uh, humanists are mostly atheists, but the important part of humanism is that we do believe in people and we believe in our ability to reason and make the world a better place through our compassion for one another. And so there's a lot of writing that is secular that can speak to that in philosophy and poetry and literature. And I've seen humanist 
um, officiants in the United States and England draw from those writings and those traditions to say meaningful implications. Uh, for example, even our military now has a humanist chaplain who has occasionally opened some uh, ceremonies with meaningful words. If you think back to you know anyone who's gone to a high school graduation ceremony or a university convocation, there will be flowery speeches that some of them are sometimes still religious, but a lot of them are quite secular and inclusive because it really is about trying to inspire everyone and be inclusive of all the different worldviews that are out there. Appreciate your time today, Ian. Thank you, and uh, do take good care. Thank you so much. Ian Bushfield is Executive Director for the BC Humanist Association.